GM. <laughs> I had the white pieces. Oh yeah. Okay, so what should we play opening wise? And I think I'm gonna go for uh Let's stick to I'm either gonna I'm gonna go D4. I don't know what Aldo plays against D4. So we're gonna to stick to my normal openings. I normally play D4. This is my main line. Um, and I play I play a couple of systems with this. I either play C4, which are the most... These are the lines that I've played since I was about 16. So I've had lots of experience with these moves. I've also started to play the London system with Bishop F4 here. But I don't think I'm going to play Bishop F4 today, only because I've played it in a lot of long play games already. So I'm going to go for the Queen's Gambit with C4. And I, I did a, a couple of DVDs on this, Killer D4 1 and 2. Done DVDs on everything. And Aldo is playing um, the Queen's Gambit traditional. And now um, I'm just going to play my normal stuff. So develop your knights generally before your bishops and you might be wondering about this pawn here if you're a beginner but uh, black never really takes that boy you can take that pawn at, you know if, if you want to play that way but it's, it's something white should certainly not fear because black gives up his center and you can often just sacrifice that pawn put a pawn on e4 but for now let's just get the pieces into the game stamp fee thank you for subscribing okay so now we have c5 and is aldo trying to trick me with Okay, something. So this is, there's two things this could lead to. Now my main move here is to take on d5, but I do smell a rat. But okay, I'm going to see what happens. Now if I take on d5, Aldo can either recapture, but I expect to take on d4. Yes, he has. And this is a very underrated gambit, actually. Hello, Charlie. Hello. You come up here. You haven't seen him for a while. Come on, Charles. Up you come. Hello. Hello, Charlie. Hello. How are you doing? How are you doing? And this is um, this is a very interesting gambit, actually. Um, which, if you're looking for a good line against D4, you can think about playing. Charlie, are you going to say hello to everyone? You haven't been up for a while. Come on. I hope you come. Charlie, come on. Just so you can say hello. Yeah, it's all right. Come on. Oh, he didn't like coming up. <laughs> no, he didn't want to come up. Uh, that was a bite saying no. I don't want to come up. I'm, I'm a bit shy today. Charlie, okay, come on. He gave me a little nip there. He obviously didn't want to be manhandled and got onto the show. So, okay, Charlie, I'll leave you alone. Um, <laughs> Queen A4 check, but he seems happy enough. There you go. He, he's, a bit, he's a bit shy today. Um, anyway, this gambit is very, very interesting way to play. Um, for black and I think it's a good choice against me because it's one of the only openings where it's black you can get the initiative I can't remember the name of the opening um, it is the something Hong Vingong Gambit or something and I'll, pl I'll play into the main line I lost the game with this the other day um, and the main line here is to grab this pawn otherwise black gets very good development against the white queen so this is all theory and the point is, if I grab with my knight here, I get some problems on the dark squares, and black can develop with knight c6. So I have to really keep my knight there, so I grab with the queen. And black can gain tempo against my queen to attack the queen, which black has done here. So he's, he's thrown the knight to f6, gaining tempo. And now the queen can be exposed if I keep it in the open. So it's best, the main line, I, I mean, I'll tell you when my theory stops. This is a very good line for black. I've actually, I'll give a little secret away. This is something I've been seriously considering playing as black. Black develops, so I need to develop my pieces. You can't play chess without development. And the reason this line is interesting is because black will castle queenside and generally our castle kingside. And the extra pawn doesn't matter so much because it's all about checkmate. But bishop f5 is a new move. The main move here is bishop c5, queen e7, and castles king queen side. So this is this is an in, this is the way that I'm still a bit fearful of. Bishop f5 is intriguing because Aldo is offering the exchange of queens and he's a pawn down. So normally when your material um 
when normally when you're material up you want to exchange pieces so queen takes queen looks natural but i guess aldo's thinking his rook will come in quickly and i have to watch out for knights to uh b4 ideas so this is interesting play interesting gambit play from aldo and i don't like playing against gambits aldo knows me well so bye charlie bye you're going on the bed you don't feel like biting me anymore well, at least Charlie is still around. I'll move that chair out of the way now, out into space again. So this is interesting. I mean, can I go queen takes queen, rook takes, and then a3, stopping the knight coming here? Maybe, but then I'm kind of worried about knight a5 and the knight coming into b3. So I'm not sure. Interesting line that Aldo's picked. Obviously some intriguing preparation. What about I go something like bishop g5 in this position, just try to develop. Then do I have to fear knight b4 so i'm thinking bishop g5 knight b4 can i then try to gain the initiative myself by playing e4 let's say queen takes queen rook takes queen this is a very tactical position hence why I, i'm calculating knight takes here knight takes here bishop takes here bishop b5 check knight back to c6 and then i can castle and i and i'm the one who suddenly got the initiative so i like that line so bishop g5, pinning the knight. Then if he ever plays knight here, my idea is to give a pawn back with e4 so that my bishop can come to b5 and that I can castle quickly. So I think I'm going to go for bishop to g5. I'm putting it on g5 because it's pinning the knight. And I may be threatening stuff like queen takes queen and, and bishop takes knight. So this move to me looks... I mean, I, I the way I like playing is as actively as possible I, I like playing active chess um so I, rather than defending passively with queen takes queen and a3 if i can find an active solution you should always find an active solution okay so knight here is is the move that i feared now i, I don't know if i've calculated this well this is where you start doubting yourself somewhat so e4 is my my idea here but this is the kind of position i could get crushed in quickly so e4 and if queen takes queen rook takes what about knight c2 check well i played king d2 and i threaten his threaten his knight but then knight takes here and i can go knight takes bishop takes bishop here check and, and then i bishop c6 rook e1 knight takes rook takes e1 check bishop here rook takes e7 check or something like that i think that works out i have to go if queen a4 I, he just goes bishop d7 i i don't I, so i want to this my whole point of this is is to go e4 and again i'm dicing with fire here because albo is coming straight at me and i i'm calculating some lines quickly but i'm also going with my instinct and, and e4 to me giving a pawn back to get my bishop to b5 and trying to get castled is of course the logical I, I want to play as, I mean, when you look at higher rated players, they play actively. They never defend passively unless they have to, or very rarely do they do. So it's a good little tip for you guys out there. If you're trying to improve your chess, then active defense is, is such a good way to play. So many lower rated players. One of the key mistakes when I watch games of low rated players is that low rated players, they play too passively. They, they, they sit there and as soon as someone puts pressure on them, they crawl up into a little ball and they go, get away from me, get away from me. What they should be doing is some, as soon as someone attacks them, you've got to throw a punch back. You know, don't just don't just defend. You've got to you've got to try to throw a punch back. So it's a big it's a, it's a good thing. OK, um, so this I thought was quite a good idea for me because, you know, let's have a look at that line. I just went through again. Queen takes queen um plo crux thank you for the cheer very kind that's one way to support this stream rook takes queen and then he has to play something like knight c2 check otherwise i'm fine uh king here rich defunk very kind of you anyone who cheers that's a great way to support this stream it's most appreciated it means i can do more of these because i can fund my eating um and after king here, so, th so this is what you've got to do. I hope you're following my calculations here. So I kind of thought of this before I played the moves, but calculation is key to chess, really. Rook takes. Okay, so he's gone here. Frank Rutten, thank you for subscribing. So I've got to now do this. Rook takes. Knight c2 check. 
King d2, attacking his queen. Knight takes e4, check. Knight takes e4. Bishop takes e4. Hope you're following this. Bishop b5, nearly mate, but he's got bishop c6. And then rook e1, we check. Knight lost. takes rook. Rook takes Charlie e1. Bishop e7, only move. Rook takes e7, check. And, and I've got a winning position, pretty much. So this this to me looks good. I'm gonna you have to follow your your own instincts. I mean my opponent can win a pawn back, but then I get my bishop to this square with check. So he has to do this. Twitchy, thank you for the donation. Very very mm -hmm. kind of you, Twitchy. Thank you so much. Okay, so my plan here all along is to now move my bishop to this square and put my opponent on the back foot. So I've given a pawn back to get the initiative. Another common theme in chess. To you know if your material up. You give back the material to get the initiative, and this is what I've done here. So there are other moves here. I mean, I could try knight here, but then I don't want his knight coming to c2 now. This is too scary. I could try knight d4. That looks like a good move because I attack his bishop. But this has got to be good. I develop a piece with check, and I force his knight to go backwards. Is there anything stronger here? If this knight wasn't here, this would be a checkmate. This would be a checkmate here. So I'm very near to checkmating him, actually. He really is dicing with death here. I mean, I've got a really funky move, like rook d5. Boom! But then he can go knight d5. Take my rook. Bishop check and bishop d7. So I think simply bishop b5 check is correct. But I think it was Spaskia says, when you see a good move, see if you can find a better move. Uh, Kanax, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Can't see it. Knight here is tempting. But then my opponent can go knight takes c3. Ah, hang on a minute. Knight d4. What about this? Knight d4. If he plays knight takes c3. No, I do not have a check there. Because his knight on c3 is defending my check. So this check has to be natural. I mean, the reason I'm, se uh, the reason I'm taking uh, more time here than I normally do. Is certain points in chess. You've got to use your time, guys. You've got to use your time. Okay, and now I had two ideas. The simplest idea was knight takes knight, bishop takes castles with the idea of trying to put a rook onto e1. But the issue with that, which I now see, is that my opponent will have a move such as f5 and his king then has the f7 square. At the moment, my opponent's king is in, in a horrible situation. So can I play more forceful? Well, let's have a look at knight, take, knight to d4 now. Attacking the bishop, attacking the knight. So knight d4. I think he has to play knight takes knight. Because if I go knight here, if he moves his bishop, I'm going to win a piece. So knight d4, knight takes knight. Now in that position, is there something magical for me? If pawn takes pawn, then he goes bishop d7. And I'm slightly better, but nothing serious. I'm spending a lot of time. Knight d4, knight takes knight, knight takes c6, knight takes b5. And I don't see a good move. So what else can I play? Well, there's, there's also knight to e5 here, because that controls his bishop. So knight to e5. What about c6? I take there. Should be good for me. So knight to e5. If he goes knight takes knight, I just take back. If he goes rook here, I can go knight takes pawn takes. Bishop takes rook takes here. Rook d8 checkmate. That's a lovely trick. So knight to e5 looks better because it controls this square. If I go knight d4, he always has a bishop d7 defense. For example, knight d4, knight takes knight, pawn takes bishop d7 he's defending as far as i can see if i go knight e5 how does he defend does he play something weird like bishop here what the hell's going on then well then i go knight takes knight he goes knight takes knight i go knight takes knight he goes what the hell's that all about guys that is really well Let, let's see let's see i'm running a bit short time so i'm going to try this move now, now the most interesting reply that aldo has is bishop b4 
and this position is wacky it's wacky probably probably hello, hello uh, Jess yeah long play game today um, against my friend Aldo do not be put off by his grade he, he's certainly not a 791 maybe I should have maybe the simplest in it you know it would have been to castle there because I cannot fail if I just played a simple move like castles in the last position my rook will come there I have to have a big initiative now knight takes g5 I was just thinking I had knight takes c6 with a good initiative but I've just realized that might be a bit more risky than I thought so maybe I should have just gone knight takes knight and, ca uh, and castles but okay this is the most interesting line Oh yeah, Adam's pointed out very another love. Oh no, you're right, Adam. Oh no, but I think he can go knight takes bishop there, Adam. A very interesting line here would have been knight d5, and Adam points out. Look at this position. A beautiful idea. If rook c8, because if if I go knight d5, my knight is threatening to come there with checkmate, and quite a normal reply after knight d5 is. Rook c8, so you've got to follow this. But then I can go knight c7, check. Rook takes c7, and rook d8, checkmate. That is stylish. Boom, chidi, boom, boom, boom. But the issue with that line is had I played knight d5, I think he had knight takes g5. I suppose I could grab his rook, though. I could grab his rook. That would have been very interesting. Opera style checkmate, yeah. Based on the famous, I uh, uh, can't remember the two players, even though I did a video on it. Okay, see, so Aldo's played the best move. Knight, knight takes bishop, and I think here I have to, I have to take on c6. Have I actually just messed up? No, because I always have knight d4. But I'll play, maybe, yeah, because a6 is now attacking this one. Now bishop a4, b5. I always have knight d4. Pawn takes pawn, knight takes here. But I'm not sure I played this correctly. I had so many uh I had so many interesting possibilities. I'm very fascinated to see what the computer says. I mean I've spent too much time to maybe use it. What about knight d5 now? Pawn takes bishop, knight here, checkmate. Knight d5 now. Can I resist such a move as this, guys? Can I resist? Can I can I resist this? Knight d5. If it loses, I can resist it. Pawn takes here. Bishop takes here. Knight d5. Knight d5. Bishop here. Then I go check and I take this. I love knight d5 now. Knight d5 now. Trying to come in here with. And if he goes rook here, I have the same checkmate. Check rook here. Checkmate. Boom. Has to be played. Has to be played. It has to be. I mean, look at my knights. They're rampaging. If pawn takes bishop, knight c7, double do da dee da da checkmate is the official term analogy that is in many books. I don't know. This is fun. This is fun. Come on. This is a fun position for me, I feel, because this knight can also go there and I'm trapping the rook. I'm trapping the rook. If my knight gets to b6, that rook is actually trapped by my two knights. My two knights control all the squares. So in actual fact, this, this is some, um, in the words of the prodigy, oh my God, it's the funky shit. I think, excuse my French. Um, the funky murd, I believe is, is the French translation. And um, well, the reason, if he goes rook c8, I have knight c7. Rook takes knight, rook d1, checkmate and that is one for the books lovely jubbly now um what can you do can you go knight e6 to cover that square well then i have a couple of options option number one is knight b6 but then you can go pawn takes bishop and do i have anything sexy there knight knight takes here pawn takes here and he's probably better there so knight, the backup move I always have is knight d4 check. This move is always my backup move because I grab the bishop and I don't lose material. So knight here, I can go knight here check. Pawn takes here, knight takes here. And then can he get away a rook takes there? Looks doubtful to me. But maybe he can. Maybe he can. Maybe he can. 
What about if he goes knight here? What about I go bishop a4? Because if he goes b5, then I can go knight b6. Because if he goes b takes a4, my knight takes on a8, but he can't take my knight on c6. So if you follow that line, what I'm thinking about here is if he plays, for example, knight e6 to cover c7, one idea after this move is to play just bishop a4. Because the idea there is to keep a threat. If he takes my knight, I take the knight, check, and I win the rook. Thank you for who is who is twitching. I'm twitching. I'm twitching. I'm not twitching because I have a beer. Um, and if he plays knight, e, if he goes after bishop a4, b5, this is my idea. So knight e6, bishop a4, b5. I then play my knight into this square because I'm going to win the rook. And he can't. Okay, so he's gone for this. So my initial thought here is to play bishop a4. And this, what I've been doing here is a key skill. Bobby Fischer used to do this. When it's your opponent's move, think, 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 think about your moves. Okay, so do I have anything better now? So I have knight d4, pawn takes here. What about knight takes there? That is some cool shit. Um, which I don't really believe because he's got bishop b4. This is just getting insane. In the words of insane in the mangrame. Oh my god. How can I not remember him? Cypress Hill. Insane. Going insane. Got no brain. Okay, so what do we do? Then I'm not looking at the chat anymore because I don't. I don't want any. I don't want to give away the. Uh, I don't. I don't want anyone to to give away any possible good moves here that I, I could have. It's not really fair. I want to work things out for myself. I feel there might be something funky. There might be something funky here. I mean, this is quite funky already, but it might be something. So knight here, check. Pawn takes. Knight takes knight. Now, if he takes it, I check here take there but I don't like it his bishops come in so knight here I don't like I like my bishop a4 because it keeps the pressure against his position so bishop a4 is my number one move knight b6 I don't quite like so he takes here then he takes here do I have anything else it kind of feels I might have something something here that's just going to be magical I can't see it if I had a rook on e1 of course I'm winning but if I castle he starts taking my pieces I'm too slow so I can't I can't do that now, um, this knight does cover d8 as well. So I think knight d4 or bishop a4. I'm liking bishop a4. Knight d4, pawn takes here, knight takes bishop. Well, he takes on a2. I don't necessarily have any threats. Doesn't look so good. So knight d4, pawn takes, knight takes e6 is my other thinking. And um, in that position, I might be doing very well. But I'm not sure. So I think I'm going to go with bishop a4. Um, running a bit short of time. There might might be a stronger move than, than this move. But I I want to I wanna try and cause this, you know, try to get the maximum from the position. I, I, okay, I'll have a look at the check now. Any, any other moves he could take my bishop? You know, knight b8, I've just now seen, suggested, um, you know, knight here. I, I couldn't see anything else. Um, da -da. I, I couldn't see any other moves. Maybe I missed something there. Maybe I missed something in that position. Was there a better move? Was there a better move there? I'm not sure. Was there a better move? The only other thing I was thinking was to go check and take here. Okay, so now my original idea is knight b6 and take this rook. But I, I have realized now that he's got bishop e4 at the end. So knight b6, pawn takes bishop, knight takes here, bishop e4, pinning these guys. And all of a sudden... No, then I have knight c... Oh, yes, we're doing this. Beautiful. Okay, my idea... Oh, look at this guy. Pawn takes here. Knight... I can't resist this. Knight takes here. Bishop e4. And then knight c7 check. Knight takes c7. Rook b8. Let me do it, man. I hope he's not listening. Aldo doesn't normally listen to the chat. Did you see that line? Did you see that line? That is one lovely line. I love these knights. These knights are controlling all the squares that my opponent can move his rook to. So I'm winning his rook. There's no doubt about it. And my threat here is knight takes rook 
Uh, then knight c7, forcing check mate. And you're going to kill a man. Cypress Hill going insane. So, yeah, this is a nice line, yeah? Knight takes a8 with the idea of coming here. And if knight takes knight, Rook D8 checkmate. This is the, this is a really interesting game. Really interesting game. I think Ado's in serious trouble. I think he's in serious trouble. It's move 18. I've got two minutes, but we're getting fifth. What are we getting? Ten seconds of move. So it's not so bad. Not so bad. The point is, if he play, if he goes bishop e4 now, that's a um, well. I can go knight takes here. Bishop b4 straight away is actually an interesting move. Um, maybe he survives after that. Shit. Oh, don't spoil my fun by playing bishop e4. I could, at the worst, go rook here. But then, then okay, there must be something stronger. Bishop e4. Knight takes a8. And he takes on this square, threatening two pieces. What do I do then? Sometimes when you try to create some art, it can go horribly wrong. And it can backfire. And I've suddenly realised that... That is, you know, maybe I should have gone for this simple other line, but it, it, it's just, maybe, maybe. Uh, I don't know, maybe. That, that scares me, that line. That actually scares me. Bishop here scares me. Do I have to go rook here? But then he takes, rook takes, he has a check. Don't know if I can claim to be better in that position. So actually, yeah, if he just switches the move order about, uh, then... It could be problematic. So bishop e4. What do I play against this move? Because he covers everything. I'd love to take the rook. But then he goes bishop takes c6. And he attacks two pieces. The knight and this one. I mean I had to go for this anyway. Because it, it looks like the most entertaining option available. Um, I'd be fascinated to see what the computer says about this. This is a game where computers will just work things out like this you know they'd just be boom 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 but we are not computers we are not computers um okay uh isla man is that harry isla man chess coach hello harry if it is good to see you in the chat uh be over in the isla man in 50 days i think it is now so bishop e4 knight takes here if he finds bishop e4 it's a fantastic defense that's a really hard move to find knight takes here bishop takes here what can i do against this though his knight's a fantastic defender ah maybe i have rook to c1 there you can flick in a check then i go king f1 if he takes here i have rook c8 check so bishop e4 knight takes here bishop takes here He's found it. What a brilliant defense. Bastard. Okay, so now I'm thinking knight takes here, bishop takes here, bishop c1. Incredibly complex. So I want to take here, he takes here, I go rook c1. So what are his options? Bishop b4 check. I'd probably go king... F1 because he has no checks. If he goes king here, I can go knight here check. King c7, my knight comes here. If he goes to d6, very weird position. This is so complex, guys. I think I'm going to go for it. I think I'm going to go for it. I'm really annoyed he didn't fall for the mate there. Um, obviously. I think I have to take here. This is a great move that Aldo's found. The only other move is I could move this knight, I've just realised. But then that does allow this check. And he and he gets castled. So I'm going to take this one. I'm running out of time as well. Running out of time. So I have to go for this. Aldo's played brilliantly to defend uh, in this thing. Now I think I have to play rook c1. Because if he can win either of these pieces without a fight... I am not just in trouble, I'm probably in serious trouble. So this way, I don't know. I kind of got my, I'm suspicious about my position. You know, you, you kind of go with, um, you kind of go with your instinct a lot when you play chess. And you kind of know when things have gone a bit wrong. 
Uh, and I feel like after Aldo found this brilliant bishop e4 move, I feel instinctively that Aldo should be okay here. But this is without any backing up or calculation. Sometimes uh, the spider senses will, will tell you. And it'll be interesting to see if the computer agrees with me that black is okay in this position or better. Now he can go check. This is this is one move. And then I was going to go king f1. Now maybe I can bravely go up. But then he's got knight f4. And I'm the one getting chased. So I want to go king f1. And then he has a lot of options. Okay, so he's gone here. Now, yes, he can take this one. Oh, shit, he's got bishop b4. I'm losing. Bloody hell, I'm losing. I miscalculated. Because if I go check, he goes king d7. And if I go rook takes here, he goes bishop b4 check. Fuck. I move the king and he goes rook takes rook. And he's a piece up. Oh dear, I've totally screwed this up. Oh, I was getting so carried away. So this is this is this is really bad. I think I've just lost now. Oh no. Check king here. My whole idea was wrong. Okay, so I'm going to castle um, because I have to avoid this check. My whole idea was wrong. I mean, okay, it's not losing, but I, I'm probably worse now because generally the knight and bishop are better than the rook. I mean, I still have some activity. So did you see Did you see that line? Um, not rook c1, rook c8 check, king d7, rook takes a8. And the move that I missed was bishop to b4 check. I have to move my king, and then he goes rook takes a8, and you can see that he's uh, he's playing loads of um, loads of good defensive moves. I mean, it's been a very imaginative game, um, but I guess I should have kept it more simple. One of my biggest mistakes in chess is getting carried away, carried carried away with sort of fantastical ideas uh, without keeping my head in reality. But that's more fun when we're playing. On a stream, at least, at least this game. I mean, what I what I should have done. I kind of knew this. If if it was a tournament game in this situation, rather than getting involved with knight e5, um, if we go back to the position, I think in a tournament, if it was money at stake, I would have I would have just gone knight takes knight and castles here. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. When I would have had a great position. So I've kind of made it. I kind of made it more interesting. But also the ideas in the game. I think have been much more interesting had I gone, had I gone for um, the other variation. So I think in some ways, even if I lose, it's going to be uh, it's a good loss. You know, I, I, it's a good loss. I'm going to say it's a good loss because it's a loss where there's going to be some entertainment, but it's still a long way to w still a lot lot away from winning. Okay, so Bishop D5. Now, Rook here is my my first thought. Rook here. Allowing him to take there. I have a check. And he has king here. I haven't got much time, I've just realised. So I'm going to have to play something quick. Not much time. I get 10 seconds of move. I get 10 seconds of move. So I wanted to go rook d1, but I couldn't see what I was going to do after bishop takes there. I couldn't see a way... I couldn't see a good move for me there. If I had a check there, he had king e7. Maybe I should have played that and just moved my bishop back to c2 because his piece is a bit discombobulated. So, okay, so the position we got here, it's certainly worse than me because he's got the knight and the bishop. But in the ending, the rook can be quite good, actually. The rook can be quite good against knight and bishop. The general rule is when you have... Um, okay, we'll take that one. Okay, so Aldo's... Aldo, I'm surprised he went there. Is that his first mistake? Why, why didn't he? Why didn't he take on b3? Why didn't he take on b3? Was that a mouse slip? Okay, because now, now this position, I'm not even sure I'm worse because the rule is, when you have a rook, the rook is actually better. The rook and pawn are better than the knight and bishop often in the ending. Often, because in the in the ending, the rooks become very good. In the middle game and opening, the knight and bishop 
are better against the Rook and Pawn. I think Aldo might have just mouse slipped there. Might have just mouse slipped because I think here, if he'd have gone Bishop takes here, Pawn takes, he gains the tempo on the game. Um, I'm not saying I'm a lot worse there because I have my Rook coming in, my other Rook coming in, but... Okay, so if I can win this pawn here, I'm going to be better. Now, my first idea, which I've got to play quick now, is to check him because I want to force one of his pieces onto the passive square on d8 because I want to make it hard for him to coordinate his pieces. King d7 obviously is not possible now, so he has to put a, a passive piece onto... He has to put a piece onto a passive square. And then I just need to go about winning this one. So rook here, he can move his knight. How about we move this rook into the game first? I don't know if this square is better or this square. This square is better because it stops his knight maybe coming here and here. The only way to defend his pawn here when I attack it with rook a8. But this square stops his king coming in. Okay, so he's managed to get castled. Now it's time to go after a6, but he's always got a5. So should I think I should play b4 now. Because if I go b4, it stops him playing a5 when his pawn will be very well defended. Well, it doesn't stop him. If he goes a5, I can either go b5 and get a very good pass pawn. Or I can take that one and I have a passed a pawn. So I'm trying to play with my pawn majority. If you have a pawn majority, push your pawn majority. I actually think now I might be a little bit better somehow. I actually prefer my position because if he goes bishop e7... I can exchange rooks off the board, and I kind of think my rook is going to be good in the ending. I think my rook is going to be good in the ending against his knight and bishop, because my rook is going to be very active. I can quickly come around, snatch this pawn, and my one main idea is I'm going to have a pass pawn on this side of the board. So we're going to do this. So I'm going to have a pass pawn eventually over here, but of course things are never that simple. Because his king is now coming across. So I have to defend this pawn first of all. So I have to play this move. This is an uncomfortable loss of time. And it's going to be very hard to win this pawn. So I could come round to this square. But then he has knight c7. And then I can go a4 and, and push. I need to create a pass pawn. But I, I don't think any of these ideas are going to work. Unless my king gets somewhere like here. At the moment his king can't come to the center. Because my rook... I don't see what his plan is, so I'm going to bring my king and try to get my king to c4. This would make plans so much easier for me. One idea is even to bring my king around here. I want my rook to keep cutting off. Okay, so how... Okay, is he going to come in here? Or is he going to come in here? Okay, so king here, check. Here. I think my king should come, no? Let's move the king. I'm not too worried about this one because my pawn, I'm going to get a pass pawn. I could have even gone a4 and b5 in that position. I could have even gone rook d6. Maybe rook d6 was correct. But I think I'm now going to try to create this pass pawn. So if he, okay, so I get my, okay, but he has this check, but I have this one. Knight takes here, king c4 I think is winning. So b5 takes, takes, knight d4, king here, knight takes here, king c4, or rook here. Both of them very good for me, so this is good. Got to be careful of my clock. So I now have a pass pawn. And he's, if he could get his king in front of the pass pawn, he's absolutely fine. But he can't get his king across because my rook stops his king coming across. This is the famous technique for endings to use your rook so he has to blockade okay so now if I bring my king he can bring his king so I want to bring my rook first but I don't want to go here or here because he has a knight check so do I bring my king up I don't want to allow his king cross let's improve my pieces first but then uh, okay I have to go here I want to control this square but he's going to now try here and here no I don't want to bring my king yet unless I have to because if I bring my king, he can bring his king. So I'm trying to get everything. Okay, so this is not a threat because of rook here. But I'm very much down on time. So I'm going to use my pawns maybe. Okay, this seems like it only helps my position. If he takes here... Oh no, I can't go rook here. Shit, because he has knight c3 check. That's why I got a little bit short of time there. 
and, and now I've lost my ah. Oh, I mean, if I, I, I mean, what a muppet I am. I play some real, I play some real muppet like moves uh, today. Uh, and this one, this one was, this one was a big one. I should have just put my rook behind, or maybe attacked his bishop and, and done it like that. Because now, if he finds this move, which is quite easy to find, uh, I'm, I'm in trouble. Uh, yeah, excuse my language. And of course, he's found, found the move. Uh, unfortunately, so now, well, now, now I, I should be able to defend this one. Um, because my pawns are on the same side, but Aldo can certainly be pushing for a win here. So we might have a bit of a long defense in store here. A long defense at the moment. I mean, if I was black here, I'd certainly try to win. At some moment, if he can activate his pieces, then he, he, will, he will maybe find a way in. Maybe find a way in. Okay, so let's, let's just try to annoy it. I should be able to hold a draw here, but as soon as I've lost my B-pawn... As soon as I lost my B pawn, it is it's basically it makes my life a lot more difficult. And it was very, very silly. And now now he's gonna coordinate all of his pieces beautifully. So um this is a very good idea. Here and here, and he's got very nice coordination. He's played I have to say Aldo has played this game excellently. I know his Elo's only twenty well, I don't know if he has an Elo. I mean Aldo hasn't been playing for long, but in my opinion he, he could certainly be Fide Fide Master Strength. So my next idea now. I'm going to try to force the draw by pushing my pawns and exchanging some pawns off the board. Because by doing that, um, I make the draw easier. And I, I think I think this should be a draw with correct play. I could have just sat there and just not done anything. But, you know, we don't want to play forever, do we, uh, in this position. Okay, so this check is the move I want to play. You know, I want to just push my pawns because they gain some space. They gain some squares. If he goes to f6, you know, I can maybe get my rook in there. So at least my pawns take away a lot of the squares for his pieces. Now, do I make his bishop more passive by going rook c1? I think so, yeah? Because by going here, he has to put his bishop here. I don't think he wants to put his bishop here. I think he wanted to try to go active like this. The one thing working for me very well is that his knight is a very bad piece. His knight can't get in. So I'm just going to push my pawns. And I don't think, I think my position is, I think this is a draw. This is a draw. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he's activated his bishop. But again, I don't see how this stops me pushing my pawns. And I think if I exchange, you know, I, I can even maybe play for a win. If I can get my rook around the back here and win one pawn, I can certainly play for a win in this position. Certainly play for a win. So, um, but that was silly. Imagine if I had the pass B pawn, I could be doing the same plan and I would, I would have tied his pieces up over here. Okay, so Aldo's now trying to exchange off. Now, if I go king here and king here, how's that looking? Maybe I should check him first, see where his king goes. Because I want to keep his knight out of this square and move my king over here. If I want to try to win this position. I'm going to do this. I'm going to check him. And I'm going to try to move my king to g4 to push push that bishop to a bad square. The reason I checked him first is I don't want his knight coming to this square when I go king here. I didn't want his knight activating, getting tricky. Because the, the one piece I'm trying to play against is his knight. And now his bishop. You've got to separate your opponent's pieces. Make sure they can't coordinate and I can even try trapping his bishop. I've got rook here. He's got to be very careful now. Because I've got rook e2 and king g4. My threat is king g4. Where if he goes bishop here, I go rook e2. Check. And I win his bishop. I'm trying to trap this guy. I think he has to move one of his pawns now. And we play... We, probably h6 is, is correct. And again, of course, I think, you know, it should be fine. Here, can I go f6 check? And then try to get passport? No, because he has bishop here. I think. I think. So probably best after eight. Well, h6 check. H6 is a great move. Again, this is the move. This is the move 
of a quality player. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this move is not so easy to find. How many people would play that? He's finding all the right moves. So, okay, well played, Aldo. Now, I don't want to allow this knight in here, really. I think I'm going to have to exchange at some point. F6 takes check. King moves, takes here. Am I really playing for a win there? Ah, got a check. So this is uh, this is tough. I kind of think now, actually, may maybe he's finding all the right moves because if he can get his knight to f6, he gets his knight and bishop to brilliant squares. So I can try to now simplify by taking, but the problem is he goes knight f6, and I'm running out of time. Seriously, running out of time. I could be in trouble here again. Ah, well, I didn't want to play that. It's the only way to keep the game alive. And the problem is now, after here, as he's played, his knight is coming around. But I do have this one. So let's now change plans and try to use these two squares. So if he goes knight here, then I have king g4 and I win a piece. But he goes bishop g5 check first here. I have to play king here. And I'm trying trying to win this pawn here so this is the only way to keep the game alive otherwise he's actually he he would have been better if i'd take on h6 you still have winning chances because there's ideas of him just picking up my h pawn now that he's consolidated his pieces on squares he should be all right but this is that this is an annoying move for him to deal with because if my rook hits these two squares it's difficult okay so well i got to, i've got to play active so check and is he going to go 98 no, he's going to go here. So this now, for a minute there, I thought he put his bishop on that square. But this now keeps winning chances alive for me because f 7s dropping. So uh, <laughs> it's a very tipsy-turvy game, this one. I'm not even sure who's better. Don't, don't ask me who's better. I don't know because he is winning this h-pawn. Probably still a draw. Probably. Where does he put his king? This is the question because if he goes backwards... I take here with check. If he goes forwards, I probably take with a pawn and I queen. And he, he's getting short of time. He's getting short of time. So, okay. So he's played the only move again. Now, can I get my king to e6 quickly? So I can go rook takes or pawn takes. Rook takes looks more natural, but pawn takes... Well, I don't know. That would be one to look at afterwards, um, to be honest. I don't know if I picked the right decision there. I wanted to go pawn takes, but I couldn't get my king to e6 because he has knight to f4 check. Um, now, knight takes here is, of course, the right move. Now, can I go f6 as the key? going to try this move. Oh, it's check. I didn't even see it's check, guys. Bloody hell, Williams. <laughs> I, I was so so looking at the f6 move I, I forgot about the check and well I, I should be active enough here not to be in trouble but he's got this knight f4 let's see so I'll come in and I think I need my rook over here now my rook my rook is in the wrong place okay so he's trying to now I don't want to move my king to e6 because of knight f4 and I just have to come back. I need to gain a tempo. My idea to try to win this is get my rook away from here, get it over here. Okay, so he's come in. Very interesting idea. He's actually trapped my rook now. Okay, so let's have a look. So we go here. And knight f4 check. I think a draw is a fair result. I think a draw is a fair, fair result here. Okay, now we can get my rook out. So we can probe like this. I love the way there's always Muppets in the chat. GM, this guy's so low rated. What did I say? I oh, I said before we start this this game, there's going to be a load of Muppets. Absolute numpty nums. Probably about 1,200 are going to say, how, how, can he, how can he draw lose to a 791? Oh my God. I've just seen that I'm a rating whore. <laughs> Bloody Muppets. You get Muppets everywhere, you blood. Okay, so we're pushing for a win here. Here and here. This looks like the way to try and win this, no? 
F6 is the move I want to play. Okay, well, let's get this one in. Because I've got G7 coming. It's not so easy for him. Not so easy. Not so easy for him. Because I'm going to either get a pawn to G6. Look at his time. Okay, I have to take here. And now, now my king is so active. Like I said before. Oh, no, that's not a move I can play in any situation. What the? What happened there? Oh, he's gone for king takes here. Check. He's a cheeky he's a cheeky player, isn't he, old Aldo? Okay, so what about I go rook here, stopping his bishop c3 move? And also, well, I could go here as well. Which better? Maybe this is even better because I'm threatening mate and his knight and his bishop. There's a lot of threats there. A lot of threats there. A lot of threats there. I think he's busted now. He is busted. He's going to be pissed off with that one. Mm. Well, there you go. That was entertaining game. I mean, very well played. Very well played. I think to Aldo, he just did a couple of mistakes right at the end. I kept the pressure up there. And uh, it, was, it was an interesting game. This is the end. My only friend. The end. Never in doubt. There was a lot of doubt going on there. Well, Aldo, you played you played a great game there, sir. You played an absolutely fantastic game. I know you're going to be very annoyed with yourself, Aldo. I think we need to look at that game again. I mean, I'm going to look at that game with a computer in a second. But let's just try to work out where Aldo's main mistake was. Because I think he was doing excellently. Um, and the game should probably all have been a draw. I think this is all okay. Now, in this position, I think his bishop goes the wrong way. I think he needs to keep his bishop well protected. Um, something like bishop here and just take here, you know. It's still a bit tricky for him, actually. It's really weird. It's really weird game. Um, and, yeah, I, I'll, after the slip... Well, I don't know. I mean, I guess, Aldo, I wasn't sure. I, I actually thought you might have been better at some point in the ending. I wasn't even sure myself. It was an interesting game. Let's go and have a look at it with a computer because this is too much for a human. And we can go and have a look at uh, now. We're, we're whiz on the computer. I might just have to change the board layout, people. And let, let's see what the computer played. I think you played a fantastic game, Aldo. Fantastic defense in a tricky position. And you kept finding moves that were very annoying uh, until the bitter end. So we're now going to use the computer. Now, another thing I, I like doing, guys and girls is lots of people ask me how, how do you get better at chess how do you improve at chess well um one of the main ways to get better and excuse me if i'm repeating myself here because i'm about to repeat myself is um by looking at your own games this is the number one way to get better at chess and by playing a longer time limit i mean even this time limit we're playing here i would say is a bit quick you know, you could play some half an hour. Every, everyone watching this could play some half an hour games on chess.com and then they can analyze it afterwards. So I'm going to show you now what I do to analyze it. And it was the Soviet school of chess when they, in the 60s, well, 50s even, when they became the best chess nation in the world, who basically said the best way to improve is really studying your own games. This is something I do with Obbjorn. We spend that we spend an hour looking at one game. You should probably spend more. I mean, I know I've heard stories of good people who became grandmasters. One of the grandmaster you guys might know, Jonathan Rowson, who was a very good grandmaster. He um, basically uh, he said it to me once. He said he spent a week, a solid week, looking at one of his games in order to prove. Um, people are saying there's funny noises with the mic. Uh, okay. I will... Du, du, du. Is it that noise? That's my beer. I don't know. I don't know what the noise is. It's probably me drinking beer. You're going to get some funny noises when me and beer are involved. It could, it could be a lot worse, trust me. So, um, it's like it's moving. Is it that? There we go. It's Oh, who cares? You'll be all right. Okay, anyway, let's have a look. So, it was a very interesting game. And we're going to go to a moment which was my first query. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the opening. Very interesting opening this for black. If you're thinking of a very exciting opening to play against the Queen's Gambit, then c5 and taking on d4 is, is a gambit I think is um, 
a cool way to play it, and I might just play this myself in a serious game. Aldo's first new move came at this moment here when I played Knight F3. Now, Aldo, I have to... The Henning Shahara Gambit is a great opening. That's the name of the Gambit. So Aldo knows the name of the Gambit. It is, it's a very good Gambit. And Aldo, is this Bishop F5 move? Now you're in the chat. So I know you won't listen. Is this, a, is this a theoretical move? I don't know. I don't know if this is theory or not. I really don't know. Um, so do let me know. It's a new move. Now the way I was thinking here was active play. And I think Aldo fell into my idea now with knight b4. Um, it still seems I might have some edge in a lot of lines here. But knight b4, I think I should be a lot better now. So the computer's giving bishop takes here as the main move. But in actual fact, e4, the move I played, is the second choice. It's the first choice now. So my instinct is good. And you can see I have a big advantage after e4. So I, I was very happy about this. Um, I don't know what the sound is. I have to... The microphone is moving. Okay, let me see if I... Oh, bloody hell. Why don't I try to fix that there? Okay, I'll have a go. It's not very secure, this guy. We'll have a go. Too many people are complaining for my liking. Being perfectionist. How's that? How's that? Is that all right? Okay. Sod it. We're leaving it like that. And um, now after the queen takes queen, rook takes, knight takes e4, bishop b5 is the top line. Um, and now knight c6 is the only move. And this is where maybe I had a stronger move. Now, my first instinct is, of course, just to take the knight and castle. Just to take a knight and castle. And the computer is saying this is clearly the best line. So I, I kind of knew this, but there were some fascinating lines. And the line that Adam Hunt gave with knight d5, let me just demonstrate this line. This is a beautiful idea that international master Adam Hunt in the chat gave. And the point of this move is I'm threatening knight here, not just check, not just a little check. That is a slam dunk sinker. That is an axe to the head checkmate. And maybe here, black would think, well, I can stop that by going rook c8. But now look at this for sexy chess. Knight c7 check. You have to take this one. And now rook to d8 check mate. Oh, my words. The rook is defended. The knight is pinned. That is... I was going to say something rude there, but that is just too much. That's checkmate, you know. That is just amazing. Now, knight d5 might be in a good move, but maybe the move I was worried about was knight takes g5, and this gets quite murky. But I like the idea. The idea is worth showing. So, um, knight e5 was interesting, but I lose a lot of my advantage here. A lot of my advantage. And Aldo played the right move. He just took here. And knight takes c6 looks correct. Because if black takes here, I take with check. Aldo played the top move, a6. And this is where things got very exciting with knight d5. So I played knight d5, actually the top choice. The computer gives this as equal. Really, really um, interesting. And the point here again is knight c7 is checkmate. What a fascinating position. Aldo again found the only move. Can you believe it? The only move. It's... It's unbelievable because, for example, let's just, let's just show this. If Aldo takes the bishop, this is a lovely checkmate. I mean, look at that checkmate. That is gorgeous checkmate. If Aldo takes the knight, then I take here with check and I win the rook and, I, and I'm winning the game, as you can see. So what else does Aldo do? Well, what if he goes rook c8 again? Okay, well, everyone, everyone watching this should... Uh, now know the correct move. White to play and win. I've just shown you the pattern. Everyone type into the chat. All 300 of you now. How does white force checkmate here? And this is really sexy. Come on. How does white force it? By the way, while you're trying to work that out, if you want to support this channel, subscribe, donate, cheer, do anything you can. It's a great way. Subscribing is great. You can subscribe a Twitch stream for free. It all helps me out. Okay, come on, where's the checkmate? Yes, Merry Hat Man, you got it. Everyone's got it. 
And it's the same checkmate. Knight c7 check. Beautiful stuff. And now the rook has to take the knight. And yet again, rook here checkmate. Thank you, UN... Uh, UN... Who subscribed there? 4G1 for subscribing. Very, very kind. You can subscribe with Prime. And look at that checkmate. Isn't that something to behold with glee? With glee. I can see I can see the computer's visible, but okay. You can all see it, okay. Uh, but don't look I mean it's just I mean look at the board, not the computer. We're just looking at the computer for time. The gummy bear. BF. The gummy bear's boyfriend, is that? Is that the 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 yummy bear? I don't know. The G bear? I don't know. Let's just leave it at that. Um so Aldo found the only defence yet again, and this is fast this is one of the most interesting games. One of the most interesting half an hour games or 15 minute games I've ever had because it's, it's full of fascinating possibilities. So, knight e6, the only move, and this is a great defensive move. Now, I was thinking here about knight d4 check, so let's just have a look about this move. Knight d4 check. I was thinking Aldo had to take this one, and now I was wondering here if I could go knight takes e6, but the computer points out that again I fall for the bishop b4 check, which I kept forgetting about for example pawn takes here check king here takes here and for the time being i'm points up but like last time i missed bishop b4 check this reminds me of a funny story when i was a kid um someone showed me the following opening i'm just going to show this because in chess patterns are so important once you see a pattern in one place you've got to be able to remember that pattern in a totally different position but in a similar way. Um, and someone showed me the following idea. And I played this as a kid once. Um, and the idea went like this. And I was playing in a school's championships. And my opponent now went knight to f6. And I got so excited because I thought I'd won my opponent's queen. And it's the same pattern that we had in Aldo's game. This is why I'm just pointing out pattern one place. And the pattern is, I got so excited, I went boom, and I thought, and I got, yeah, winning your queen. Whoa, yeah, I'm championi, championi. And then my opponent went here, took here, and you know what he did? Bishop b4 check. I went, oh, and it's the same pattern. It's the same pattern. And I luckily found I had queen d2, and actually this is a variation, which is about equal. But anyway, I just wanted to point out, because it's the same kind of thing, in the game... I did play the best move, going back to the game, bishop a4. And Aldo now again played the best move. This is a really good game. b5. And here the computer gives castling. Oh, no. Look at this for a crazy line, guys. Oh, my words. How sexy is this? Castling. Pawn takes here. Rook e1, threatening knight c7. Checkmate. And what? Okay, I'm going to ask you one more time. What does white do if black plays rook c8? Oh, this is... Oh, you can see it. You can see it. Look at this. It's the same again. This is the same again. What an amazing game this has. The reason chess is so beautiful is because there's so many artistic art forms. And look at this. Knight here, check. Rook takes here. And it's the same checkmate. Rook d8, checkmate. Uh, I mean, astonishing. Astonishing stuff. Really is astonishing. So, oh, and the computer gives some crazy line with here, knight e5 check. And for some reason, this is a draw. For some reason, this is a draw. What the hell is this? What is this? I mean, this is just bonkers, guys. And the computer says that this is a draw with best play. King e8, knight c6. I mean, come on, man. Come on. What the hell is chess? I mean, who can say chess is boring? The thing with chess is, and this is the honest thing, look, if you're just starting out in chess and you're thinking it's frustrating, let me promise you, I'm not a very patient guy, let me promise you, thank you for subscribing, Oranges, that chess just gets more and more beautiful the better you get. The more you understand, the more beautiful it becomes. It's like most things in life. The more you, in, you, know, you get into it, the more possibilities you see. It's the same with chess. Um, and okay, well, let's go back to the game because again, here, knight b6 to me looked like an amazing idea, but it's a blunder. This move is actually a blunder, and Aldo again plays the only move 
Now my idea here is pawn takes here, knight takes here, and I was hoping for bishop e4 because bishop e4 looks like a good move, no? It attacks everything. Now, what is the move again here? Anyone else know what the move is? <laughs> well, if you don't know the move by now, where the hell have you been? Knight to c7 again. What the hell? Yet again? Knight takes knight. Rook d8. Boom. Unbelievable. Unbelievable lines. But Aldo played bishop e4. And suddenly here. Well, I thought I was okay after here, here. Rook c1. But again, Aldo played the best line. I'm sure it must be the best line. He played, look, um, okay, he could take on g2 first, maybe. But bishop a8 was good. And I suddenly realized here that if I played my planned move of check, I fall for that scoreboy trick, the same trick I fell for when I was eight years old. Bishop b4 check. And look, this is why I'm pointing out again, because it's the same themes. The thing about this game is it's the same themes throughout the games. It's the same themes. The same themes. The same themes. This is why it's fascinating. And now rook takes rook. And I forgot about this. So suddenly, suddenly I'm in trouble. I have to castle. And Aldo played another great move. Bishop d5. Maybe I should go rook here. And Aldo here, I have to say, just mouse slipped. Otherwise, Aldo would have beaten me. Thank you for the mouse slip, Aldo. You deserved it. The way you defended this uh, uh, again. You played nearly perfect chess. You're going to be a you could be a great player, Aldo. And here, Aldo meant to play bishop takes bishop. When of course he's got better chances, but in the in the end he played here, and now I don't think I should ever be worse because the rook is actually very good in the endings, and I've got a pawn and I've got a pass pawn coming. Um, everything went okay for me now up to around this moment. Maybe I should have gone rook d6 here. I actually thought I was a lot better than the computer's game. I don't actually believe the computer. The computer can be wrong. In its assessment, the computer gives all lines as a draw. I I personally think that this position is hard hard for black because the king can't come across. I have a very simple winning plan. At some point, I I can even go rook d3. Let's say you go knight c7 as a computer suggestion. Now, if I go king d3, I block my rook. This is end game play, so the black king can come across. And now black is fine. But what in this position if I play something like rook d3 and just try to bring my king across like this? The computer's given some line like h5, but now I go king here. Let's just follow. King e7, I go king c2. Knight e6, well, okay, I go g3, just stop that. This position, this position, okay, or maybe I go, I mean, this position, I don't, I go king here. I, I believe that white's better here. I think white's going to be a lot better because I can go, I can slowly get a pass pawn and you might have to lose one of your pieces at that pawn. I don't believe the computer. Sometimes you shouldn't believe the computer. Um, but the game, well, let's go a little bit further because a couple of mistakes were made. Mistake number one for me was losing this pawn. Very stupid. I should just go rook b1. Whoops. Um, but I lost it. And now, now I'm a bit worse probably. But... Aldo could not get his pieces connected. And I managed to cause as many problems as I could here. I'm probably okay again here. I'm just wondering where Aldo went wrong. So it says it's still a bit better for Aldo here. I don't I think it's okay. And if we go a little bit further, well, again, much better for Aldo. Oh don't swear again, Simon. I might have to swear. It's Friday, it's sweary day. Um, I go g6, and here, this is where I think Aldo went wrong. Okay, so it, uh, the computer gives bishop e7. I think the problem that Aldo had was, and I know Aldo's in the chat, is that the bishop, the bishop, got lost over here. I think the bishop needs to remain on a on a safe square because loose pieces drop. And I think as soon as this bishop started to wander, I think why I, I have the upper hand here. Um, so. Keep yeah something like bishop f6. Just keep it solid. I, I think it's a draw because I don't. I think it's very hard for Black to make progress here. But in the game, when the bishop started to wander, I feel that around now, this is quite tough. Even the, the computer says this is still okay, but the critical blunder was 
well maybe here I mean I, I don't know why here uh, I think knight to f4 I have to take a draw knight to f4 I take a draw here you know knight to f4 I go king here you just go knight back because I can never get my rook out this is just a draw maybe maybe Aldo should have taken the draw I can't I can't do anything except for move my king so this is just a dead draw after bishop b4 a big mistake because now my rook comes out and I think now I have very good winning chances can Aldo draw this he has very short a time maybe he can draw this position but it's not easy it's not an easy draw he has to play knight versus rook maybe later on so and of course there's more that was the final blunder the final position and you can see here the computer now gives some ridiculous mate in 17 or, or something stupid like that very interesting game very interesting game